enable yeah. Miracle, like somebody has to take that role. One of the cores has to, right? And once you were able to, to see those players, and it all, wasn't always Matumba Man, right? Sometimes it was Mind Control, sometimes it was even Miracle. But once they were able to, to grasp that and really have a full understanding of like, I can trust my team in this regard. If I'm having a bad game, that's okay. I still need to do what's important, right? I still need yeah. to make the plays that I need seconds. to. They learn to sacrifice for the greater good. And it's, uh, it's, it's paid out, Five literally. Seconds remaining. So, <laughs> it's pretty good. Big time. <laughs> Big time. Big money. Yeah. Which no, apparently none of the care. players know. Yeah. Because they just play Dota anyway. Hey, look at that. Oh. Jakiro first, first ban. First ban, Jakiro. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, Jakiro has been uh, quite an on and off hero recently. I've seen some teams like the hero, some teams don't pick the, like, I totally ignore the hero, but personally, I like the hero. Yeah. It has wave clear, <laughs> wave clear, and a very far wave clear, his ultimate. There are certain lanes when you're playing a support, you're like, you can't push out that lane, but with Jakiro, you can because yeah. of the range. In fact, it's like one of the most unique things because sometimes you can stop pushes before they even get to your tower, yeah. right? And be able to uh, like keep backdoor protection. I actually like the bans that they're actually do doing here against. It's specifically tailored against uh, SGE spots. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had both really good Earthshaker games. Jakiro, they used one game. The other game wasn't banned, but they chose not to use it. But those two heroes were really key in their composition, the catch and the push out. Yeah, we just mentioned the importance of wave clear and... Uh... Yeah, Jakiro, great one for that. And, yeah, Theo Licker, or Shaker. For the side of SG, I don't think it comes as too big of a surprise that we see uh, Iowa and Venno banned. Maybe the Venno, the only mm. one out, not to target uh, GH, of course. Yeah, but they have to be very careful with uh, like so many of the heroes that Liquid can play. Yeah. The Necro, the Brew, like you, you always have to keep, like even the, hus the occasional Huska, like your draft has to be able to deal with those kind of things. That's why it's really difficult to draft against Liquid. They go for the Nyx, uh, which like very standard staple pick. Yeah, and I feel like it's the obvious replacement to Urshaker in a lot of ways. The that catch. he is that yeah. yeah, like that four position that can go for the catch, and his added advantage being that he gets a lot of information for you. But um, they gave away the Night Stalker though, and I, I think Night Stalker is really good against Nyx. And okay, the first two heroes are actually both really good against Nyx. Ken, because you make your team group up, you mm -hmm. push. That's what Nyx does not want. To fight against group ups because they don't Nyx doesn't really do anything. You kind of have to draft a good team fight with Nyx uh, in a lot of situations Five to make up for the hero's weakness. And Night Stalker really gui guards against um, split pushing, which is then natural, like naturally what you want to do against Chen, right? Because he forces so much grouping up. Mm. And I feel like Night Stalker is probably one of the best four positions uh, outside of Earthshaker. I mean, you could argue Chen can deal with split push later in the game and you have the, big, the ancient creeps and you push what? out one. Oh, yeah. CM is good against uh, it's Chen. Big because yeah. of the Chen. Isn't Witch Doctor better though? You guys are all so normal mm. about that. Why do you pick I, it now? I actually kind of like uh, CM in certain... Like, if you must have a plan. Like, when you pick CM, mm -hmm. you're basically trying to build like a tri wave clear lineup. That's why you want to abuse the aura. You don't just pick CM because there's a Chen. That's okay. also about the heroes that are coming, so it's suggesting that they are going to go for like the push-up hero, like the Linas or like some Darks here, like some. Yeah, we're we're gonna have those spam uh, spam yeah. mid hero and probably uh, whatever they use. Yeah, yeah, whatever they use the mana well, like or even uh, is Puck still with that? Yeah, Puck still in the pool. Yeah. those kind of heroes are really good with CM. So this is what I'm getting right now with this pick here. I I do uh, I think there's a chance maybe that they still pick up um, an initiating offlaner. Uh, I know we've seen a lot of wave clear out of them, but uh, one of the things was that like whenever Urshaker was taken out of the pool in South America, it was like Bat Rider was a very common pickup. He mm -hmm. uses the Crystal Maiden aura. That's, I think that's a he's, possibility. He's great for vision as well. He's still okay, but I hate playing Bat Rider against Nice Talker. To yeah, me too. <laughs> it's awful, man. Can't they have such see, a vision can't advantage. Can't see anything. They ban out the Clinks, which is pretty good against the Chen. But overall, right now we see two like very like this like very different openings from from the teams. And but I would say that Liquid ha early game should be looking much better because of the NS and the Chen compared to the Nyx and CM, which needs more time. So what are the the spam heroes? They 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 ban on one. Mirana could be really good. Yeah, Mirana. Like Park, uh, Darkseer. I don't know if they run Abaddon because Abaddon is like a NA thing. Oh, they go for like even more team fight tight. Um, tight. So against tight. 
Do you, does this mean that if SG wants to try and avoid team think, fights, or do Kimber, they have to build more team fights? can be good for SG here, but they need to pick it at the right time. We so they Necro go for first. the first spamming hero, Necrophos. I really like Necrophos against Tidehunter. Uh, it's kind of like similar to the vein of Disruptor, in that it's a hero that can lock down Tidehunter and finish him off before he gets off his yeah, ultimate. He's going to just have to get like a hood. Yeah. Even a pipe at some point. Ten seconds remaining. Then the Chen is going to have the mech. Like, Chen is pretty good against Necro because he can stop the Reaper kills Five from far away. Remaining. Yeah, yeah, we saw that power of uh, the Pugna also being able Pugna still in the pool? Oh. No, 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 no it got banned up. No, by I SG. Think what I kind of like about Tide here is if what you're saying is going to be the game plan for SG and like having these kind of self-sufficient spamming mm -hmm. heroes, uh, it leaves a lot of room to farm for your three cores on Liquid because the lanes are kind of always pushing out. And Tidehunter is one of those offlaners that I feel like I can never run in pubs, but I feel like it does. It is viable in mm. in pro games because you really need that space to farm on that offlaner. Yeah, I feel like it's it's you can't just be a blink ravage. Tide, pretty hard to win in pubs. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you can attest. Yeah, you can I really attest on that. that, that. <laughs> Me too, dude. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So they go for Life Stealer, which is uh, one of the few better solid carries Five against Nyx. The, in, uh, the innate BKB that you have, the spell immunity. And they have like a very group up pushing lineup right now for Liquid. The Tide, the Chen, Life Stealer. Now, I've always seen Life Stealer picked as like the safe lane against Nyx offline, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, but as a four position, isn't it, as if Nyx is four position, isn't it a little bit better against Life Stealer? Because you don't have that laning feints nonsense and, and where life is so dominant. And the carapers will own you if you are trying yeah, to Yeah, exactly. You try and do the, the blink ravage. Yeah. If you have a spike carapace off, life stealer is instantly stunned. And you have a stun out of invis, which is yeah, kind I guess of problematic. It goes for both you. ways like that. But I think the other main important thing why the life stealer is uh, good with the lineup is I think they're going to roam a lot with the NS and Chen. Mm -hmm. So your safe laner has to be somewhat self sufficient, and life stealer is going to be able to fulfill that role okay. pretty well. Why? Um, so in that case, I would ask why Life Stealer over the other self-sufficient heroes that are also good versus Necrophos. Um, Monkey, well, Monkey King not not good against Necrophos, but like Ursa, for example. Mm -hmm. Like those are two heroes that are also very self-sufficient. What's what's special about Life Stealer? I don't know. I think I feel Life Stealer is more solid. Personally, I I, I like the more the, reliable. You yeah, mean? more reliable. Yeah. And okay. also, I only, I pick also if I I want to have like a lineup that can maybe like use the Roche to snow. I think it's a lot of preference between the players, what they like to play. Okay. And personally, I feel like Life Stealer is more like stable. Like the Chinese, like Chinese would pick Life Stealer, the Chinese teams, because it's very solid. Yeah. Like back then when they pick it a lot. I and I do like uh, Life. Oh, now now it's a Life Stealer mm. versus. Monkey this hero team. is like, I guess he kind of uses the aura now. If you go the max, primal spring, and you just push out lanes. But will you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really good. Uh, even as core of uh, like carry off lane, I think you don't really need to max your stun. You should max your the jump, yeah, okay. the tree down, so you push out the waves. It's a great farming tool. Like monkey is able to jump from the tree and kill a creep wave, and instantly jump back into the tree. So it makes him. He's not like full on juggernaut life stealer where he's got an innate tool that prevents him from being ganked very easily, but it's kind of close to that level. Isn't that, that the same to... thing that SG this morning basically abused against VG, where, where VG had the Monkey King and they knew exactly when he was going to do exactly yeah. that and they catch the they had, every time? Uh, that game they had uh, Jakiro and they had Oshaker. They yeah. heroes that can actually just stun. They hear the sound. I cue. guess that's very difficult. We don't have the instant liquid. stuns here on, on Liquid. Yeah. Do you get the silence from Night Stalker? Yeah, but you can't stop him from. Like, if yeah, he jumps down, I don't he immediately jumps enough. back. Yeah. It's not fast enough. Okay. They ban out you also have to be in position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, right? Of course. They ban out the Viper, so to protect the Life Stealer pick more. Uh, I guess you can still go Razor if you really want to <laughs> own the Life Stealer. I've seen a couple of Razors not feeling it right now. It I mean, just doesn't seem to be the same. He does Viper. use the plasma field. I mean, the plasma plus the CM aura well. I guess. Mm, yeah. But I'm not sure if that's the right hero for them because they don't really have much team fight now except for the Wukong's command. Yeah. Like everything else is not really like yeah. not comparable to the tide. I'm not sure what they want here to. What's uh, what's with the TA ban? Are they expecting one of the flashy T heroes from Miracle T Mid? TA ban. 
Uh, I really like very focused single target damage uh, yeah. against I mean, Monkey King and Necrophos. Tia is good but... against like Lina, those kind of heroes. So maybe they want. Maybe they want. Lina yeah. uses the aura from CM definitely yeah. and clears waves fast. Turn to pick. Uh, it will be an Ember, Ember. instead though. Ember is like a stuff. both way matchup. Um, but still, it's a hero that uh, uses the like the main thing is like it uses the CM aura. They're gonna have this like tri core setup, so I think. Oh, Monkey King should. Wait, Monkey King is off lane? Necro off lane? I guess it's Monkey King. Seconds, can they I... aggro Tran lane into... I think it's too dangerous against hard, Chan, It's very right? hard because of yeah. the Tran. I think and you got a tied 1v1 I, I would actually point. put Monkey King off lane and Necro yeah. safe lane, Ember mid. And yeah, and just let the Monkey... Monkey King might not have a very good start initially, but he's going to be able to catch up with the CM aura and the Primal Spring. So I think that might be... For me, I'm, I'll, I'll run it that way. But I'm not sure if SG is going to do it that way. He's just gonna... her. Yeah. Invoker against Nyx though. Nyx is ah, uh, I mean Miracle doesn't care, I guess. Yeah, it's no. not the it's like the best counter you can get from. It's very position. annoying. But the rest the rest of the cores are not like the best at uh, being able to deal with Invoker, right? Because he he offers so many like harsh disables yeah. for these heroes. So what what are we thinking here? Is this draft enough to to beat Liquid? As as Liquid is the the favorite going into this, I believe the SA Dora man. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> All right, right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna stick with Liquid just because I think it's really difficult to play into Invoker, um, like Tidehunter. They they have this like very clear team fight advantage. Yeah. You mess up a couple mm. times, it's it's gonna cost you a lot. I don't know if SG is good enough to be able Ten to play seconds, that right? kind of flawless Dota. Sometimes against... you gotta just believe, you know. You just gotta believe. Yeah, winner. we can do it. Seconds. All right. <laughs> Well, let's see. I'm not giving uh, them my energy. I'm sorry, Winter. It's all on you. <laughs> let's see if Winter's belief is enough to pull them through. It is over to Odie, Pixel, and Fog for the first game of this Winter's Bracket Finals of Group A. Thank you very much, and absolutely. Liquid versus SG. We've just seen the two drafts come through, and there's a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to be excited about as well. We've yeah. got this incredible mid matchup, Miracle versus Adriano. It's going to be Miracle Invoker versus Adriano Ember Spirit. That's going to be hype. We've That's got hype. some sort of, sort of out of the meta picks as such. The, the Tidehunter coming through from Liquid, we're looking that up. Something that they, they don't really play that frequently. Three times. They played it two times at TI, and the time before that was eight months ago. So not a lot, a whole lot of play on it, but like they were saying on the panel, there's a lot of team fight coming out for them. But I don't, I'm, I'm kind of liking what SA's, SA's got, what, uh, what the Brazilians got going for them right now. Yeah, they look pretty hot earlier the, today. The last pick, Ember Spirit. There's not really a whole lot of disable on the side of Liquid. It's now it's they have the crippling fear, and then the Invoker. Other than that, they have nothing else to stop TPs unless the Chen has some creeps going on. That being said, though. I do like what they've got going. I, I believe in them a bit, but you know, Liquid it definitely is the stronger team, and I think Miracle can go out of control on this Invoker as well because he's gonna get help. That's the big thing. It's it, you know, Invoker versus an Ember. Invoker kind of wins that because Ember is so low armor, but Ember can force the lanes out a lot. But throw a Chen in the mix, Invoker is gonna be fine as long as there's some rotations. I mean, as the panel sort of touched on, there are well, there is a hero that's sort of a, a bit of an issue for the Invoker, the Nyx Assassin. Nyx as well. It yeah. can it can kind of screw an Invoker's game up. I mean, if, if there's any sort of player that's going to be used to playing in these sort of situations and having, you know, five heroes counterpicked against them, it's going to be Miracle yeah. and his Invoker. But how much issue of an issue do you think this game is? It could be for him having this Nyx against. It, it could be a big problem. Like, if they actually struggle in this laning phase, I feel like they can come out to a very big deficit. And I think that SG might go aggressive, it looked like here, when I saw their... Uh, when I'd seen initially, but no, now it looks like... Because it's going to be Necro offlane, so I thought they were going to give him some help. Because Monkey King, it's played by Costa, and Costa is their safe laner in comparison to Laposa playing the offlaner. Okay. So. so a bit of a switch up in that sense. Straight up, the other core getting out with the smoke, getting a nice ward down. Yeah. Not to block, but just to watch those sort of movements from Liquid. and Also, yeah, just to, to get an idea of the lane, so maybe SG can look to find these favorable matchups. And the nice thing is too is like if they if they help the Monkey King early, that's where it's it's kind of that Ursa matchup for the Tide Hunter. You yeah. can really just suffer so much versus Jingu. He gets a couple stacks on you, you just get bursted down. But I think this is where we're gonna see Kuroki play a big factor in this game. Playing around the mid lane, playing around MC's lane like he did that last game. Gank, that one single gank in the top lane can be so crucial because then Tide Hunter out levels the Monkey King, out levels the CM. He doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter so much because he gets more of that damage reduction versus that physical. I'm hyped though. I'm pretty excited to watch. Uh, yeah, there's gonna there's gonna be so much aggression in these lanes. Yeah. As you said, both teams are out to just absolutely just destroy each other's safe laner in this laning stage. 
I'm excited for the the SG Monkey King. I've I've seen a bunch of this hero played in the safe lane. I've seen a lot of the Chinese teams play it. They go that Battle Fury build. In, as the one position, I do like the Battle Fury build, so you can push out the lanes. But there's also, you know, there's other builds where you see the Echo Saber, the Diffusal. Yeah. Some oh, other people I've seen the Mask of Madness, but bottom. though, straight up. That's going to be your first blood, ladies and gentlemen. And going Boy. the way of Matumba as well. Catching out the poster as they try to get into position to contest that bottom rune. But hey, 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 Matumba. In with the money to begin things off, you know, 440 gold in the bank off that bounty in First Blood feels pretty good for this safe lane lifestealer. Yeah, and it's already, we were talking about the lifestealer versus the Nyx kind of matchup, and they're already putting the Nyx and the Necro bottom to at least contest versus that lifestealer, but now he's got boots. He's a pretty happy man. Yeah, it already becomes much harder for them to, to really scare the lifestealer. Sure, they can keep it to move away from a few CS, but the kill potential is going to be a lot lower and that he can... Sort of dart back and forward. I'm going to be keeping such. my eyes mostly on this mid lane. Just because I think these two guys... Big names. They're the big names. You know, Adriano for SG, of course, their biggest one. Until, you know, I've seen those Earthshaker plays are definitely the ones that are standing out a bit more right now. But still, this, this Invoker versus Ember matchup can go... It, it can go either ways, but I think you know, Miracle is more super comfortable on it. Once he gets like a Lacrity or Fort Spirit up, Ember Spirit suffers that he has super low armor. So he can get punished and pushed out of lane quite heavily. And you can see already with the uh, movements from SG, they've got the Nyx Assassin heading over to sort of keep tabs on Kuro and, and his Chen, see what's going up. The Lacour in the neighborhood, looking oh. to tap some XP up as well. Juicy. The Dream versus a Chen, and the Nightmare for a Chen, getting, you know, yep. you're doing double tornado and it's getting, you're getting all your shared experience. It's, it's painful. Mind Control though top, we see him, he is having a field day up here. CM, not really one of the best heroes anymore, period. You don't really do any damage and you you only have one Frostbite in lane, you have the Clarity. It's very tough to actually sustain yourselves there. Versus that Tide who brought so much regen, but now they're going to be able to get some stacks up with that Orb of Venom finished on the Monkey mm -hmm. King and he can put a decent amount of pressure onto the Tide Hunter with that. And you can see Thea Lacour as well down in the uh, jungle of Liquid. They wanted to contest that bounty ring, but GH, he knows. He heads over, makes sure that you know that bounty ring is going to be safe for Kuro to get to help him on his way to level two and yeah, get him into that position where he's going to be able to start making those movements and rotations and having an impact on the lanes. Mid lanes here so far, looking pretty even. 10 for 4, Miracle 10. 11 1, Adriano. So, and it's dead even, in fact, but this, this Invis room. Invis could change things up. See how Miracle can play his way out of this one. Looking to set up, getting close, but Miracle already suspects something's kind of odd with this aggressive movement from Adriano. Miracle backs up, not looking to reveal straight away. This is smart from Bardito. So Miracle, you can see that he's sort of expecting that play, but he's it doesn't come two. out straight away. CM is level two as well. Might want to build... Nah, no, they just go for some harassment. The minus armor yep. started building up on the Ember Spirit. It's oh. it's too much in top. That's what we were talking about. You can leave that Monkey King alone yeah. if he has a good start. Jingu Mastery doing a lot. He won't dive for the kill. The Orb of Venom helping to bring that tide under very low mind control down to about 7 HP in that. It'll back away. Had to use the South to survive there, so a lot of the sustain just got pushed out for MC. Bottom lane, GH. Trying to push the other core away from having a look in on this side pull. Both level 2 at the moment on these two. Very aggressive supports early on. And bottom lane. Tumba, CS wise, 13 for 4. Yep, told a lot of deny has been going on as it's a lot harder to get into position. Bottom lane, looking for the stun. Nice control there from the yellow just to make sure the GH and Matumba can't do any more damage to either himself or the poster. So now the dream happens for SG. The Monkey King is absolutely alone top. You get the 2 0 2 build, and Tidehunter cannot contest anymore versus that double Jingu Mastery with the Over Venom. CM has the liberty to jungle, get those levels up for that Frost, uh, for the Arcane Aura for his buddies. Fairly even across the board, though. Yeah, Kuro yet to, to make those movements. I mean, at the moment, GH going rather deep here. The other core is on. On the case, he's going to look to try and steal that rune, and he will get it. The stun falling a little bit short from Theo, and now GH, he just turns with a void. And Kuro's coming too. Starts to smack he's... into this Nyx. I think the Nyx might actually just not get uh, yeah, killed Kuro, here. Kuro doesn't even bother coming up. He kind of walked in the direction and said, all right, you've got this one on your own, GH. And he certainly has, picking up the solo kill and stealing the bounty rune. That is, that is certainly a way to sort of shift the, the difference between these two. In mid lane, mid here's lane. the rotation. Kuro coming in with a golem. He's looking for the control. Oh, Slider Fist comes out. There's the cold snap. Nice little dodge to avoid the centaur, but it may not matter. And indeed it doesn't. GH is coming as well. It's a party in the mid lane for Liquid as they clean up two. Oh, they're Deal not done either. He's in trouble as well. Look at this Kuro troll from Kuro on his 10. 
The creep's going crazy. Oh my goodness. Miracle gets the double kill, and that movement, that build up as well from Kuro and GH. The whole four minutes, Kuro focusing on that, the leveling and the farming and getting the right creeps from the jungle, and then you have that much of an impact in the mid lane. He even tried to skill slight, he tried yeah. to dodge the spells out there, but there was so patience. Many, yeah, there's just so much stuff being thrown at him as well. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so we certainly talked about the lack of you know stuns and lockdown for the draft that the Liquid have. But of course, Kuro quick to remind us that once he has the right creeps under his control, they have all the lockdown in the world. I like how Miracle went for the 2-1-3 build as well, so he made sure he has the, the alacrity, he has that extra right click, that damage that he needed. Oh, man, and here we go again, again. He's going for it. Return of the Zoo Part 2, he's in trouble. He will dodge out the Centaur stun, but it doesn't matter. They've got so much damage with GH there throwing down multiple voids. It's another kill in that mid lane. This first night time is an issue. As soon as, this is one of the heroes, that, like uh, not only the Night Stalker, but these strength uh, support heroes versus Nyx Assassin, you can run them down and render them pretty useless inside that laning phase. And this first night, GH is really doing that. Now level four already, continuing to make the moves. Some salved up as well. Necro's well, lane, though, really yeah. deep. It's got a TP though, so they've got to save the Void. And GH is saving the Void. He's a smart man. This guy is a TI winner. Yep. He knows what he's doing. Holds those spells, perfectly played. And again, 7-0. Only one lane now, really going perfect for them. It's that top lane, of course, for the monkey. But Ember Spirit's definitely suffering. CM can't really help too much versus Night Soccer. Look at this, oh, he's in GH trouble. is just going in. He really is. There are going to be TP rotations. The posts are coming through. They'll turn towards GH. The silence is going to wear off, but you know, gets the frostbite, but no, he's down. GH denying us of the 7-1 Brazil dream as it stands 8-0, Liquid leading. He is, he is going. Do they have the mana burn skill? They do. Is it going to be enough damage? They're trying to get as many right clicks as possible. Monkey King TPing in. Another TP from CM. Oh, the spooky skull. Oh my goodness. Look at GH this is speed. Living. <laughs> he oh just my runs. God. My control with the well played yeah. as well. So much space coming out from GH. Look the at that. The pressure is unbelievable. How long can he keep this skull alive? Oh no. Uh oh, my control top though. Trading some hits. Yep, yeah, out because the boundless strike and tide. Falling low. We'll be fine. GH has got a new pace. He's gonna have a Oh, finally. He consumes the skull between his buttocks. 4k gold lead at the moment. Seven minutes in. Yeah, Miracle is already a problem getting this much, getting this much out of the laning phase. I, you, ideally, versus the Invokers, you want the ganks to come onto him. But them roaming onto Miracle, it's a very Liquid-esque move. That's what they like to do. Give Miracle that great start. And he's an Invoker starting out like this. Oh my, you're giving Miracle oh, Invoker oh, a good God. start. That is, that is the fear of many a professional Dota player. Oh yeah. Kuro as well this game already having an immense impact. Level 5 Arcane Boots finished up. Everybody farming on the side of Liquid now. Look at this aggression of Miracle. Can't see Fuzzy trying to have the high ground with Simba. Goes for a, a quick bite. So back up to full health. GH on the watch for CM or. Oh, Holding on for the Dukes there, they're, they're hunting. He's got to get oh, caught here. Oh, he's in so much trouble. Bardino's been found out. He does have the back of a Theolacor, but the Sun Strike goes through. It's enough. On point from Miracle. Can they find the return kill? Adriano moving forward, instantly silenced though by GH to try and hold back the potential of the Searing Chains. Tornado as well, Miracle starting to toy around with them, found with a Void, oh! He's falling low, but Costa Beal comes in with the rotation. Boundless strike down, they do lose Adriano, but they get the kill on Miracle. They're looking for more. GH still may be a little too speedy. He's gonna have phase boost back up in a second. They'll get the Jingu Mastery built up. Can they chase this? GH looking for the Jukes. Tower starting to bite into the other core, but he'll find the stun. Set up for Costa Beal to pick up the double kill. Big rotation there from the Monkey King as they get two for him, and they do put an end to Miracle's reign on that Invoker. Yeah, very nice rotation. I, you see how uh, Miracle prioritizes on the Tornado early on to remove that Flame Guard so the damage doesn't build up. It's a really important thing to do as Invokers when you're playing versus that matchup of Ember Spirit. But yeah, again, this is daytime, and Night Stalker comes in and gets a... Uh, Gets a kill, but the mega kill streak goes towards the Monkey King, as yeah. you were mentioning. That's, that's perfect for SG. They couldn't have that go any other way. Top lane, Ravage into Sunstrike on Adriana, meaning there's no chance for him to run it away. Oh my goodness, Liquid seeing an opportunity and not holding back. And look at Kuro here. He has Manta styled his creeps. He's got triple purple blasts at the ready. Yep, sends one home to full heal, and those those blasts would have connected top as well if it wasn't a, a finish off from the Sunstrike. But Getting involved with Sunstrikes when you have no stuns on your team this early on, 
absolutely the dream. Already a 5k lead, sub 10 minutes for Liquid. The supports on the side of Liquid are just making so much space. Well, in comparison, this is why we've seen the Crystal Maiden kind of fall off a lot. You see she's 0-3 already, not really having too much of an impact on the game, just kind of giving that aura. Other than that, she's, she's just quite weak. Down bottom, SG. Just trying to use the strength that they have, grouping up with this Monkey King, who is still in a great, in a great place, Costa Bills. 5k net worth, second highest on the board. And with a with the tower taken down, he's going to be pretty much on par with that a miracle. And yeah. uh, does have a, you know, a decently considering the kills uh, in comparison to Matumba Man's life stealer. The, the one good thing too is, you know, they're playing around their strengths. You know, they know the Necro and the Monkey King are the strongest, so they're going to that lane. And we see Adriano, the Crystal Maiden was at least stacking for him. So he did have a triple stack at one of the medium camps, and it was pretty fortunate camps for him. And you see him already level 8, starting to catch back up already. On top, SG wanting to set up potentially Costa Bila with the eyes on. But Summer Man, they have put the TP in as well from Laposa. Has got, of course, that Reaper Scythe at the ready. Hard kills to go for, obviously, both. And you know, Man having that rage, mind control, being as tanky as he is on the on the Tide Hunter. Kuro has four Seder creeps. Yeah, one of them got sent home, but he has three now up top. <laughs> he's got four. Yeah, he has four. He's one at base. So they have Darkness up as well, oh, and goodness. he's gonna pop it probably in the next ten seconds or so, just so he can have that nighttime pop in right afterwards. Oh, so there we go. Go. Are you ready for the purple? I'm ready for the purples. Where is he gonna the go? The blasts are gonna come out soon. They absolutely are. They won't even need it for this here, and they'll throw it out anyway. Kuro, bringing down Bardino. They don't have reveal though. The Nyx Assassin is six. They throw the Monkey King ult. They are going to look for Mind Control. He is the biggest of the tank. Does he get the kill? They can't. The heal's too much. Mind Control is going to be saved. Turns around with the Gush. Gets himself out of the Wukong's command. He's going to be sent home as well. Can they finish him off in time? Well, with the Remnants, they will. They do bring Adriano in just in time. Jumps forward with the Remnants. We'll be able to clean some of these creeps up as well. As SG do manage to come out on top of that altercation. Good reactions there from them. I like that they brought all five there. That's like very important. They know that the Ravage is going to be up very so soon. They saw Darkness popped. It was, you know, it was the opportune moment for them to bring everybody. But that Chen heal by Kuro, that 250 heal, just enough to put my control high enough not to get bursted. Eyeing up for potential more here. Costa Bill looking towards Matumba. This is what's going to happen, though, for a, a bit of time, at least for Liquid. They have to play that kind of 4v5 until. Invoker feels like he can get involved where you want that Aghanims. He's actually looking to try to set up for the Nyx assess and bottom on the Invoker, but this is a very tough kill. He's trying to do the outplay with the full Deafening Blast combo. Oh, and again, look at this. This usage of Ravages from Mind Control just straight up setting up for the kill. The Sunstrike won't connect, but it doesn't matter. GH and Mind Control have enough damage to break down Adriano, and now they're closing in for more. Boundless Strike comes out from Costa Bill, trying to hold them back, but it doesn't matter. They lose Leposa on the Necro. They will manage to get the return kill onto GH, but Matuma Man is in and out of the creeps. He's got the stick charges, will start to back up. So SG do at least find one kill, but again, they're losing two cores off the back of that trade. And we said, you know, we haven't seen a lot of the tide enter from Liquid, but I love how Mind Control is playing it. No hesitation, using this Ravage as a setup for the Sunstrike. Even when it miss, it's getting the kill done every time, just that no holding back from Mind Control. There's a reason why he is so renowned now. This guy knows exactly how to play his matchups, how to play his heroes. Barely, didn't even die, right, in the top lane at all? Yeah, didn't even die top versus that Monkey King lane, which we've seen time and time again people struggle versus. And now, you know, they're making all the space in the world. Miracle, 900 gold away from the Aghanims, and that's when he can get involved. And it's looking pretty damn scary, 15 to 4 already. Pretty big detriments. 6k gold lead and a 5k experience lead for Liquid at this moment in time. Absolutely, as you say, just an incredibly quick timing on this Aghanim's forecast for all Miracle. Just like the panel said too, Tidehunter can suffer a bit versus the Necro, but the way to counter that is you go for the hood really early. You go into that pipe build so you can't get bursted through it, and that's exactly what he's doing. Has the hood finished up already? Theo giving a lot of information now, watching Mind Control, ping him out. Looks like they kind of want to go for something here, but there's many more in the area. Matsu's there, so, so is GH. Scary, yeah. I mean, if anything, this is just giving the information for Laposa to, to try and get the heck out of there, but I don't know if he can. GH and Matumba closing in upon him. He's got the Ghost Shroud, but they block him in, allowing the Sun Strike to connect, and Laposa is gone. Necro down again, 16 to 4. Alright, GH is out of control now too. Medallion already finished up. Top 4 net worth, Night Stalker. 
Ember P is ahead of the ne he's at ahead of both of the Ember and the Necro from the opposing team. And we look at the wards coming out from Liquid already. They're trying to keep that advantage going. They want to be able to see whenever the rotations are coming out so that they can always have the outnumber. And that's what's going on every single time oh, now. Bottom, bottom lane. Miracle. Trying to play around court with Costa Bill. Will throw down the boundless strike. Has Bardino, you know, but even the two of them, they do not want to mess with that invoker. And they'll he's give him tanky. a tickle and back off. Yeah, he's too tanky already with that 1300 HP. And up top, Liquid. Looking for the tier two. SG, they do want to respond though, bringing the full five man up here. They want to try and take some sort of a fight by the looks of it, but look at this aggression from Liquid. Just sending mind control forward on the front lines. Adriana coming in with the side. Gets the hood. chains. As you say, at this stage, SG heavily, in, 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 but almost fully reliant on the magic damage. There's no way that they can bring down mind control on the tide. Yeah, Hood and Hand of God, it's it's too much sustain at the moment for them to deal with. And they have a bit of a greedy build coming out. You know, the Monkey King wants the Battle Fury. Still about 400 gold away, so his damage isn't really there. He's not online. And the other heroes on the team as well. Everybody's kind of lacking those items. And Ember Spirit, super behind. Not even bots finished up. Not going for that Veil build oh, or anything like that. He's just straight in on the back lines. Hunts down the Necro. Finds the silence. But Tuma Man closes himself in with the Centaur. They get the Ghost Shroud out in time on the poster. But he is surrounded. They're looking for the Wukos command. But no, Costa Bill holds off. He says, we cannot take this fight. They just have to accept that the Necro is gone. They'll have to let this Tier 2 drop. Miracle hunting with the Tornado. Through the trees, won't quite find him again. GH as well, sweeping the tree line, looking for that Monkey King. Who will get it back safely to base. They'll have this Necro up, fortunately for them, with the low levels. They're not just done. Just 10 seconds. At all. They have everything ready to be expended. They have my control, they have Ravage, they have Chen Hand to God. They're looking to keep that pressure going. Yeah, no holding back from Liquid here. And understandably so. We're only 16 minutes in. They have this 8k gold lead, and the heroes to absolutely capitalize on that as well. What can SG do? They'll jump forward with the Primal Spring, but immediately the Rage comes out. Ravage as well. The Monkey King's down. And this game, this game looking may... like it may it just be over. Is there anything they could do? They find the ult, but it's not enough initially. They do get the kill with the Remnants. There's been a buyback from Costa Beal. They've got to look for an intense hold here. They get the chains onto Miracle. Sun strikes down on Tejana, but he moves out the way. Bardo going for the ult, bringing Miracle and Mind Control down low. Mind Control will drop. They've lost two on Liquid. They do find the route onto the Night Stalker. And SG showing us at a point where many would have said maybe it's all over. They show that it certainly isn't. They can still offer a fight. Punishing Liquid there. Can they catch Kuro? That's the question. He's smoked up. Did hunt for him in the tree line, but it looks like Kuro will be able to get himself safely back to base. It's 17 minutes in though, and they, that's a forced buyback from the Monkey King. The tier 3 did still go down, and it was pretty much like it was the Rage wore off, and they just full jumped Matu with triple remnant. Just enough damage to be able to bring him down. And they're looking to keep that aggression going. It is daytime for another 2 minutes or so. They have to take advantage of any of these opportunities at the moment from this detriment. Any kill is so is I mean, super big for them right now. Mind Control's deep. He is tanky, but he's all alone up on that top lane. It's four heroes. They are surrounding him. He's a big kill as well. Mind Control's got any chance of getting out of this one. He should be dead here. I believe he is. Mind Control, he'll make them work for it. But he's ticking down. The Heart Stop Aura certainly working through him. And that is going to be another oh. for SG off the back of that. Did you, did you see what Kuroki just picked up? Oh, you saw it, didn't you? I did not see it. Oh, it's a Dagon. Oh, it's a Dagon chain we've got. All right, Kuro. He is he's in. He's ready to zap some fools. Mo the, one of the big ways to hurt Monkey King is you're, you have no magic immunity, and no magic resistances or anything. You want to be able to burst him with magic. And same thing with the Necro. Necro pops Ghost Shroud. You've got go. Dagon now. <laughs> Let's see who he can zap. He's going to be going on here. Sunstrike laid down. Oh, the Posa gets forced forward, gets the Scythe. That's what he has to say about that Dagon. Costa Beal being worked upon by Matumbu, who's now got the Desolator. Can he get himself out of this? He's running away, and the Monkey King does have the heal flying through. Should be fine, but I tell you, who isn't fine. GH, uh, GH taken down. Double kill for the Posa. And now Matumbu managed to. Trying to fight back, but there's four heroes here. The Ghost Shroud keeps the poster safe, and Matumba, he can't find it on his own. Now the TP comes in. They've lost the tower. Mind Control on the front lines. Chains holding back Matumba. Here comes the tornado. Looks like SG may just leave La Posa dry. He's trying to get himself out with the four star, but the open wounds come in. They'll be able to bring down the Necro. Everyone else on SG getting themselves away, and believe it or not, they are slowly but surely reducing that lead that Liquid have in terms of net worth. With these plays, 
quite, yep. quite, you know, the ad absolutely admirable hold from SG, considering the situation that Liquid managed to force them into. It's, I mean, they have to take advantage of any of those type of daytime moments, and they did very well with that, that one there. Just the, uh, the four staff coming in from the post of being able to pierce the back lines. I think they got the last hit on the tower too. Yeah, they had got the tower, top tower as well during that, but now Liquid goes into that Roche. Nyx almost has the Blink Dagger, so they will have that better form of initiation. Recently, and then at least in the last series that SG was playing, they had those clear-cut initiators with that Earthshaker. Now, at least with the Blink coming out soon, it will help a lot. And Ember Spirit finishing up a Yule Scepter, so more way, a way to actually remove that silence that's been so punishing toward him. Yeah. And Battle Fury is finished up on the Monkey King, so they, they, are, they are starting to acquire a few things, but Liquid looking very strong here anyway. With that Deso, with that Aghanims finished up on the Invoker, they're looking to put more pressure on during this nighttime. Bottom tower is the look for the safe objectives, Liquid after Roche. Taking down the shrines. GH wanted to go for something, some kind of play here, but multiple more heroes show up, unable to find the opportunity. But now, it's since we said that tier 3 was down, Liquid, no hesitation. They're going for shrines. Take it easy. Get the safe ones. Mid lane TP's coming through, Matuma. On the front lines of all of this. And Liquid once again grouping up. They've got good creeps to do it as well. Ready to try and break the high ground. Adriano, and in cold snap. Can SG hold this? They've got the full team back for the defense. Dio Lacour jumping forward, doesn't find the stun opportunity. Tornado and EMP are going to be off the off the mark. They use the EMP into this. Spike Carapace to hold Miracle in place, bringing him down to half health. Chains and the root. Great tracks has fallen. And Liquid, they do have Ravage available. It's still a very scary fight for SG. There's a jump in. Stun only onto Mind Control Rage. Comes out from Matumba. This is the way they need to take this fight. Just throw spells from a distance. Constantly with the chains, with the boundless strike. And then the Nick stun. They can actually do a decent amount of damage. There's no clear initiator on the side of Liquid. They just need SG to overcommit in order for MC to get that big Ravage off. And SG being very careful that they don't give that opportunity to Mind Control. Yeah. Liquid's seeming to start to notice that they can't really go for this top, but the chain stun's coming oh, out. I mean, look at that, and then with the triple remnants, he's going to bring them low. He dodges out of the Ravage as well, but the other two are left to within it. The other course down. Four star from the Necro, gives him up to the high ground, so strike. Oh, he's going to be dodged as well. The person gets out, but he goes back in with the Reaper Cypher. It's not quite enough, though. Kuro will survive. Only the Olicor going down at the moment. Adriano walking back into the midst of them all. Miracle heading forward, drops down the path. They have got the ult here from Bardo. It's actually going to be cancelled here, and in fact, CM will pay with her life. Laposa trying to get himself away from a tumba. Deathing blast on Adriano, but Costa Beal comes in with the back. Rukong's command down. Miracle falling low. They will be able to take the Aegis out of his hands. Adriano gets himself out of range of the Life Stealer, keeping himself alive on the Ember Spirit. Tornado is going to be juked out by Costa Beal. The, the melee rack still alive. Matumba turning back towards Laposa. He doesn't oh have the Ghost God. Trap back up. That is the Necro down. Sunstrike coming through, boundless strike thrown down onto Matumba, but there's the silence, Adriano in trouble, he's been surrounded, has been taken down, doesn't have buyback on the Ember Spirit available. So Liquid will clean up, get Matumba the double kill, take the top set of racks. The damage from the Medallion plus the uh, Desolator, that Necro gets put at negative 7 armor, gets chunked down 350 to 400 damage per hit from the Lifestealer. Just easily eaten alive. Same thing with Ember. Both these heroes, that's what they suffer from. The Necro and the Ember Spirit. Sure, you have some magic co immunity co coming from the Ember Spirit, and you have, of course, Ghost Shroud for Necro, what? but if you get hit by that medallion, that Desol, you're at negative portion. You're taking such an amplified amount of damage. And the question is, can Theo Lacour do something big here? They have the Monkey King in the neighborhood, Matuma Man going for the purchase of the secret shop. Can they, can they try for this? Doesn't have Boundless Strike up yet. They need ah. the Chain Stun into a Necro ulti. It's, it's going to be hard. I mean, Matuma. He does have GH. Oh, GH. Oh, he finds him in the tree line and cuts down the tree straight away with a sun strike. That is a dead monkey king. He is gone. And uh, they're trying to move in for more. SG is sending everyone in to try and hold this. They do get the GH kill. But losing the monkey king just like that. And maybe Laposa as well. They'll try and hold back with the Yules. Ghost Shroud. Laposa forcing himself down to the low ground. You but see he's that damage in so much trouble. Yeah, Miracle just punching into Laposa once this. Armor reduction comes through onto him from the Deso, as you said. And this man, I don't think he's getting away. Sunstrike not going to be on point, but the control from the Deafening Blast will be. SG losing three once again. The vision coming out from that flight from Night Stalker. Able it's... to find the Monkey King, isolate him. 
Yeah, 13,000 gold lead now. 10,000 experience lead for Liquid. And they're just, they're not giving SG any space. So we saw the monkey can go for the Battle Fury build, as we mentioned a couple times. That build, you have to be able to force, you have to be able to push lanes out, you have to be able to get online. Your next item is the big damage one, and then your third item is that BKB, which lets you survive the fights. But they're not allowing this to happen. Even when it's daytime, even when Ravage is on cooldown, they were continuing to try to run at them. Now Ravage is up, Darkness is up as well. They're ready to take the last few outer towers and solidify their lead. SG. Outside of the base, eyeing up their tier two. Maybe testing the situation here, Lacour, trying to get the info, seeing if there's any potential of them being able to look for a fight around this position. But it's so hard with the deficit that they are at. Can they really attempt to tackle Liquid head on? As, you know, let alone outside the base. It's now the oh, time has scan. Blink Dagger. I don't know. They're scanning out. Mind Control comes through with the dust. He knows that they're in the neighborhood. Quickly, though, SG blink away. As soon as that dust is out into the Nyx Assassin, they know that they cannot stay there. The vision game too strong for oh, Liquid with Nice Talker. Oh, he's been left behind. Bardino just picked apart by Miracle as he doesn't get himself back up to the high ground quick enough. GH, he knows where to go straight away. Costa Bill jumps down. Gets himself away from the big bad Nice Stalker. My control patiently awaiting for that Blink Ravage. The Infest comes out. He's ready to go in. After this tower dies, Catapult, of course, with Alacrity, just killing that tower. Oh, no and there time. it is. They just go for Adriano. They want a quick kill, and they get it. That's an Ember down for 50 seconds. Wukong's command laid out, but he's pushed out by the Deafening Blast. The ult ends. He's been disarmed. Kuro's still with his controls. The Golem's throwing the rocks out at the Monkey King. Gush slowing him down. They can't keep this Monkey King alive. He's down, and Laposa's being surrounded. Matuma still has the rage at the ready. Starts to rip into Laposa, who forces away. Theolacor's going to be the new target. Double kill for Matumba. They can't even get the Reaper Scythe out, because the silence is there in time. SG were four out. Make that five. Liquid finding the team wipe. GG is called. And Liquid here in this game one. At no point at all was this team behind. They were winning from minute one. Very few mistakes coming out for them. GH went absolute, absolute beast mode this game. I think I looked at the at the kill score. It was 16 kills. He was 7-2-7, seven, and seven, making moves everywhere on the map. Even during daytime, he was finding opportunities to get those kills, those ganks on mid lane. We've seen this liquid before. We've seen what they like to do. Helping Miracle, exactly what they did again. Unbelievable.